the pressurization continuing within the vehicle at this time. We also have a hydraulic commit that will permit the hydraulics to drive the engines in the first stage. Liquid hydrogen tank in the second stage now pressurizing. T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 60. Our status board still shows we're go at this time. T minus 50 seconds and counting. We have transferred to in power internal power. The transfer is satisfactory. The 6.2 million pound Saturn V launch vehicle now on its own power at 38 seconds and counting. To repeat, the ignition sequence will start at 8.9 seconds. We'll be looking to lift off at zero. T minus 30 seconds and Don't counting. forget. We'll count Ooh. down from starting at T minus 20. T minus 25. Stage is reporting ready for launch. T minus 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. Five, four, we have ignition. All engines are running. We have liftoff. We have liftoff at 7 a.m. The tower has... Hi, Todd, our building shaking here. Our building shaking. rocket has just gone through max Q, and that is uh, one of the first critical stages after liftoff, which of course is the most critical the stage. flight controllers are reporting enthusiastically that all parameters look good. We're now the here. flight director says go all the way. How about one that? 50 seconds. How about that? The Saturn has done it again. Right on time, precisely on time, except our clock stop. 15 miles down range. Two minutes coming up on uh, staging. This is separation Booster of the first stage. Says he's go on all sources. The inboard engines have cut off. The inboard engines have shut down at approximately two minutes eighteen seconds. The first engine uh, cuts off. No reports yet on the outboard engines. There it is. There's there the staging. Outboard engines. We can see it visually. Outboard cutoff was called at two minutes thirty-four seconds. Beautiful. You see the first stage dropping away. The S2 has ignited. Thrust is okay on the S2. The booster says we've got a good second stage. We are sixty-four miles down range. Our velocity approximately ten thousand feet per second. second plane has separated the interstage surrounding the second stage engines, and the tower has jettisoned. We saw that. You saw it on that long-range camera. The tower jettisoned right on time. We're three minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. At this point, uh, the flight is about 50 miles downrange, 100 miles high, and you're seeing it very clearly on that Igor camera, despite some cloud cover. You can see the rocket, uh, the escape rocket still dropping behind up there. Flight Dynamics says, uh, in response to the flight director's question, we're real good. That's Flight Dynamics. And the uh, plots here certainly back him up. This uh, S2 burn, that is the second stage ignition, lasts Our some six minutes. Our distance 
now is 150 miles, 150 miles downrange, velocity approaching 11,000 feet per second. You see on the pad here a fire that uh, was started by the... Uh, into the flight. Uh, by the launch. Uh, it doesn't look uh, too serious at the moment, and uh, some of this was expected. The uh, ground track is reported to be exactly nominal. One of the things that would have to be tested here, of course, was this launch facility. And uh, one of the things that they have to know is how much damage is done to the launch facility, uh, how quickly it can be turned around and prepared for the launch. At this point... 200 miles downrange now, and our altitude is approaching 80 miles. Those five J-2 engines, a million pounds of thrust... An aircraft off the east coast of Florida has acquired the spacecraft and booster combination. Yes. Coming up on five minutes. Flight director has just quizzed his booster controller on how the S-4B, the third stage of the vehicle, looks, and he, he's just as happy about its looks as he is the second stage. Here we see a picture. I'm interrupting Paul Haney to tell you about the picture you see from the top of the umbilical tower. That camera, that slave camera survived, that the heat uh, and the blast, uh, how we wouldn't know three miles away when we took such a beating. But you see the hoses on the launch pad, hosing it down after that uh, heat, which is enough to take off three quarters of an inch of concrete, uh, they tell us. It burns it away. Fantastic launch. And as we look now into launch control, those 450 uh, launch control operators uh, have now done most of their job. They've been watching on these uh, close television cameras that uh, are right in the launch site and monitoring all of the phases of the flight. And they have every reason to congratulate themselves. So far, the flight has gone exceedingly well. There's still much to be done. The second stage. And we are rapidly approaching a point uh, where we will see we will hear an event called propellant mixture ratio shift and uh, this will cut down the flow of oxidizer and thus uh, enhance the flow of the hydrogen propellant the, the next uh, critical moment we have here in the flight uh, comes uh, about uh, uh, two minutes from now when the third stage uh, must ignite. This third stage has been tested before. So far, the first and second stages, which had not been tested before, have worked perfectly. The third stage has run previously, and no trouble is expected with it. Its big test will come on a second ignition a little later on uh, in the flight. At the next uh, critical moment, about two minutes uh, from now, and as you hear Paul Haney reporting, everything is going exceedingly well. Boy, I'll tell you, though, that rocket goes off with quite a blast, and we may have to give some reconsideration to uh, just what we build here at the press site. We need a blockhouse, uh, not a uh, uh, cottage, as we have here now for our studio. The roof came in, uh, part of the paneling of the roof. The clock stopped. Uh, this big glass behind me here, which... Uh, uh, I have been worried about, I must say, for a couple of weeks and been assured by NASA engineers, although they're not responsible for it, and they made sure that they weren't responsible for it, which is the first time I had a little suspicion that Bobby Wester, our producer, might be putting something over on me. This piece of glass was shaking so that Jeff Grounick, my assistant, and I were holding on to it, hoping that somehow or other that would keep it from coming in on our heads. That blast was something absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I was at the first Yucca Flats test of the first uh, open shot of an atomic bomb in this country. Uh, that was back, uh, oh golly, what, uh, 14, 15 years ago. We have an animation now of the second stage ignition, which has just uh, come up. Well, I was by back, we were five and a half miles from that blast, and it wasn't as great as this blast from three miles. At 8, uh, 40 into the flight, 20 seconds, there's a possibility that we may have lost one engine on the second stage. That's only a possibility, not a confirmed fact. Eight minutes, 30 seconds. You just heard uh, Paul Haney say there's a possibility of a loss of the an engine. There are five engines on the second stage, and a loss of one engine Coming up on staging of the second would stage. probably not be critical. Second stage is dropping away at any point. Off cut off on the second stage. There it is, the second Eight stage. minutes, 50 seconds in. We have J2 ignition on the third stage. And Booster says the thrust is okay on the third stage. He confirms thrust, 
a good thrust nine minutes into the flight. The third stage has one J2 engine, similar to the five engines on the second stage. It developed some 200 to 225,000 pounds of thrust. We're 914 miles downrange. Our velocity now up to 23,000 feet per second. Uh, the performance right at the end of the second stage seemed to be a little erratic. We had some data dropouts. Uh, one flight controller thought perhaps we'd lost one of the five engines. We have no confirmation yet. I'm sure it'll turn up in the data. We did burn out approximately on time. And uh, the S-4B ignited right off on the, just as it should have. This uh, third stage... Uh, burns about uh, two minutes and 24 seconds, From the something like that. Report that the first stage of this uh, vehicle has impacted uh, about 100 or more miles downrange. We have ships deployed in that area which will attempt to recover uh, as much as they can of that first stage, and we will uh, try to get some camera packages which were mounted on the skirt of the second stage. Ten minutes and 18 seconds into the flight, and the flight director advises we have about one more minute of burn ahead of us. The Vanguard ship has acquired out in mid-Atlantic. We are 1,200 miles downrange right now, and we're coming up on 25,000 feet per second. No matter what happened at this point, we could burn our service module engine and get orbit capability. Ten minutes, 55 seconds into the flight. So now now we do know that we will get uh, an orbit. Uh, we've we reached just 17,000 miles an hour. Of the S-4B, a first report. Uh, the animation uh, shows the... Eleven minutes, ten seconds. We have a confirmation of cutoff from the Vanguard ship in mid-Atlantic. The S-4B has shut down. The report confirmation came in here at 11 minutes, 10 seconds. The Ullage engines on the, on the S-4B have also uh, fired. And the word from the ship in the Mid-Atlantic is, we are all go, we are all go. Every sequence has come exactly on time. Uh, that shutdown was scheduled for 11 minutes and 5 seconds into the flight. They got a confirmation at 11 minutes and 10 seconds into the flight. And now, at this point, uh, they are inserted into orbit 116 miles high. And uh, most of the test <coughs> has been conducted and is successful. They have gotten the first and second stages to fire as planned. The orbit has been achieved as planned. Now, uh, with this orbit, they will circle the Earth uh, uh, twice.